Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is time for our morning strategy session. Listen, I'm super excited to be before you guys on this fantabulous Friday morning because I have a special guest with me, you know? I figured if I'm going to share with you guys three ways to show up as a coach and a mom during this season, I guess I should probably have my kid on with me. You're while not he's a guest. You're not, you're not a guest? Well, you're a guest here because oh. this is your first time going live with me. So that's why you're a guest. You're not a guest to me. You're my son. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's, I want to give you guys some time to chime on in. Do me a favor. You guys know the routine. Come on in, tag another coach, make sure you are introducing yourself, telling us who you are, what type of coach you are. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. It is time for our morning strategy session. I'm super excited because I do want to share with you three ways to show up as a coach and a mom during this pandemic, right? I know we're all self-quarantined and we're at home. Listen, this is my first time ever being a, a home school teacher. <laughs> like, where did this come from, right? I'm just, I'm on the phone talking to his teacher, talking to him. I'm like, this is like way too much. But you know what? We're moms and we rock out, right? So I wanted to jump on and really share with you how we can use this time to maximize. How can we change the way we're looking at the situation that we're in? Because I don't know about you. Hey guys, you're saying, hey, Toya and son. You want to introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. What's your name? Carter. Carter. What grade are you in, Carter? Third. Third grade. <laughs> I have a third grade honor student sitting with me today, y'all. My third, and let me tell y'all. So because my kids, all three of my children are in the honors program. So not only do we have like regular third grade work, we have like super third grade work. We Let me tell y'all, my kindergarten, kindergartner is in the honors program as well. How do you have honors kindergarten work? Like, can somebody tell me that? We over here reading rhinoceros and all type of words for the kids. It's way too much. So listen, I wanted to jump on. Make sure you guys do, you know, do our thing. Jump, in, jump on. Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Tell us what type of coach you are. And tag another coach. You guys know coaches, there are so many coaches across the, the board who are moms. And, this, and we're in a season where I've been telling you guys and instructing you and encourage you to show up increase your visibility during this time so what's a better way to increase your visit your visibility as a coach and to to use those same skills as a mom right do you think i coach you yeah yeah, yeah because we're at school right now well you're not at school right now your brothers are at school right now you're sitting here next to me Yesterday, he asked, can he go live with me? I really didn't know how to bring him in with me yesterday. So I figured, why not give him that opportunity so y'all can see. This is my oldest baby. Yeah, and she, she said I couldn't because I have my do-rag on with no... He had his do-rag on. He didn't wash his face or brush his teeth. I'm like, no, sir, you're not getting ready to come before the people looking like this, right? So let's go ahead and jump into these three ways to show up as a coach and as a mom during this pandemic season. Let's go ahead and share those three, re those three ways. So number one, for my coaches, make sure you're introducing yourself, you're sharing who you are, um, make sure that you are tagging another coach. I am your vision coach, Latoya Early. I help startup coaches find their message. I help you narrow your niche and I help you create multiple streams of income through business growth and lifestyle uh, transformation. I had someone ask me on yesterday, what do they consider a startup coach? So a startup coach is someone who's in there, who's a dualpreneur. They've already started their coaching business, but they're needing additional support monetizing their programs and really leveraging their messaging and their marketing. So if you're wondering whether or not you're that startup coach, I, the startup coach is someone who's working as a coach. They've started their coaching business, but again, they need help leveraging their messaging and their marketing, and they need help monetizing their program. Cool. So if you are a startup coach, make sure you introduce yourself below. Make sure you tell me what type of coach you are so that we can really get this dialogue moving forward. Samaya said she's a health coach 
and she think more for nurses and the general public. Okay, okay, cool. So that's very specific and we're gonna deep dive deeper into that type of um, focus coaching or niche coaching as I call it um, as we move forward. So let's go ahead and just jump into those three ways to show up during this season, right? So I've been encouraging the coaches to use this platform, use this time to really grow your visibility, really grow your business. The first way to show up as a coach and a mom during this pandemic that we're in is be a comforter, right? Be a comforter, be a comforter to your client, be a comforter to your children. How can you do that? Let them know that things will return back to normal. I know we spend so much time watching all of the different movies. You can sit closer to me, son, if you, if you know, it's okay. I know we spend a lot of time watching these crazy movies that are predicting where we are and sharing and saying this is what's going to happen and all of this good stuff, but we have to be encouragers, right? We have to encourage not just our clients, but we have to encourage our children because our children, before my kids um, were sent home, they were exposed to a lot of information about the pandemic that I hadn't even revealed to them. So when they came home, one of the first things I asked were, were they afraid? My oldest son, like, no, I'm not afraid. My youngest baby was like, uh, you know, he was a little afraid. My middle baby was like, yeah, he was afraid because he heard that people were dying. So I had to explain to him. I said, remember when you had the flu over Christmas break? I said, do you know that more people died from the flu than people that were, you know, dying from this this virus that we're having right now. And so my son, my baby said, well, I know that God protects us, right? Listen, out of the mouths of babe. So we have to constantly encourage our kids. We have to be their comforters during this time. Not only do we need to comfort our children, but we have to comfort our clients. Because remember, we're here to solve a problem. And so whatever your whatever problem your client is currently experiencing, you have to be the one to, to provide the comfort for them in this season. Let them know that things will return to normal okay let them know that even if you have a little skepticism you gonna have to start walking by faith too this is not the time to provoke fear we need to strengthen the faith in our children and we need to strengthen the faith in our clients how do we do that we're constantly using our words to encourage them do me a favor carter tell tell them what do i have you guys do every morning what do i what, what's one of the questions about your words that i ask you in the morning Mm. What's, what's one of the words yeah what's something that i ask y'all when it comes to your words the things that you say what's one of the things that i ask you when we on our way to school what do i ask you i said where's your what power in our words yep where's your power in our words in your words right what do, what do you use your words to do build up build up and not do what break down break down right so we have to be the ones to pour into our children and pour into our clients. This is not the time to use words that provoke fear. This is not the time to use words to pro, uh, provoke anxiety or depression. How do you show up as a coach and as a mom? You be a comforter. You show them how to use their words. Like I said, sometimes the media is bringing forth so many different you know uh ideas and predictions but we have to use our words our words are powerful and if you're provoking fear in your clients if you're provoking fear in your children then guess what fear is going to rule but if you begin to provoke faith in your clients if you begin to tell your clients and your audience listen everything is going to be okay then guess what it will that's nanny yeah. and huh Oh, excuse me. Guess what? They will, right? You want, you can push that. Every time somebody come up, just push wave. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got to make sure that we do that for our audiences and we have to make sure we do that for our children. We have to be their comforter. We're, we're their news, right? We're the ones that's giving them new information. Number two, replace the news with something motivational. My kids don't watch the news, y'all. I, I don't play that. They don't watch the news. Whatever I want them to know, they'll know. Replace the news with something motivational. Inspire your audience. Give them books to read during this time. Give them a music playlist. Listen, I'm a part of this another community, and the coaches are creating playlists for their, for their clients. Like, create a music, a playlist. I think we might do that today. Create a, their playlist, the stuff that they want to listen to. I don't want to listen to that. But no, we're trying we, to listen, we listen to real music. 
she listened to the music that um that like she listened to the music that's not actually real but look it's real to her but we listen to real music what do i listen to you listen to the uh to the gospel stuff i know that's real but then you listen to some other stuff that's like not real how is it not real because look you watching like like i don't know how to say it like you watch like you listening to stuff like 2012 2013 that stuff we listen to like 2020 and stuff. Do you hear this? He talking about I listened to stuff in 2012. First of all, that wasn't that long ago. Check this out. I'm not even old. Like, we're not about to go she there. She was 33. Yes, she did is you, old. Did you not just tell the whole world how old I was? Look, we're going to have to do some, some housekeeping. I'm going to have to teach my kid what not to say on social media. No, it's okay. I am 33. I'll be 34 in April. So, listen. We're talking about replacing the news with something motivated. You spoke, you're not even doing your job. Oh. replacing the news with something that's motivational, replacing the news with something that's inspiring. Give the kids something to read. How about you post the books that you're reading so that your audience can have something to drive their intellectual, you know, to drive them intellectually. How about you post a, a mu some music? How about you post, clearly I'm outdated. Like, did you hear that? Did you check that out? Anyway, how about you post some music? How about you post some encouraging videos? When was the last time you and your children sat down and watched something positive? Like, we all sit up. This is to tell people to read the Bible and shut up. Really? Yes. Me? No, he's saying that's what we should tell people. Yes, please read your <laughs> word. Read your word, people. But read something that's encouraging. Read something that's inspiring. Don't sit up and let your kids watch news. Don't let the media be the only thing that your audience hear. Make sure that you're showing up as a coach and you're inspiring them during this time. Share some books. Yes, please share Bible scriptures. This is the time where people need to know who God is. This is the time that people really need to learn who Christ is. Understand that the reason why we're able to sit and not be in fear is because we know who, who's in our heart. Oh, God. God is in our heart. And what does he do? Protects us. Absolutely. Right? Like, we're not in fear over here. But I do have to still keep them motivated and encouraged and keep them inspired. And that's what you have to do with your children and with your audience. I've been trying to keep you guys inspired, keep you motivated, letting you know, like, look, y'all, this is okay. This is the time to maximize. Now, let me be let me be clear. I'm not saying that I get it all together. I'm still trying to figure out how to get these kids to keep, do this IXL and this homework and talk to y'all and do my own stuff at the same time. But what I do know is that I'm taking it step by step. I'm taking it day by day. And I'm learning that not only do I have to encourage you guys to keep moving, keep pushing, and to build your businesses, but I have to, co I have to teach my children the same thing. Why? Because their first source of media and news is us. So we have to make sure that we're pouring into them correctly. So we talked about, so far, we've, I've given you two ways to show up as a coach and show up as a mom during this pandemic. So the... Oh. Here's another another tip that I want to share with you. Don't overindulge in the media, right? Don't overindulge in the media. Learn how to create your own media. This is this is creating media. This is what we do. We're going live. We're talking to each other. We're we're providing information to one another. I'm providing media and information to them. Where they're asking what's going on. I'm delivering the information to them, but I'm learning how to do it with tact. I'm learning how to to deliver the information without you know provoking fear. Understand that your children don't need to sit in in front of channel two and channel four and hear all of the the bad things that are going around. Make sure you're the ones that's sharing the information with your child and make sure you're the ones that's, and that's bringing me to my point number three, you're offering a different perspective to your audience. Offer a different perspective. Number three, help not just your child, but help your audience recognize that this is a time for new opportunities, right? Help your children help your audience recognize that this is a time for new opportunity. What do I mean? This is the time for families to come together. We're all in quarantine. We're all in the house together. 
This is the time where we can be playing games together. We can be having movie night together. We can be cooking together. All of the things that parents are so busy, too busy to do. They're too busy to sit down and teach their kids this, or they're too busy to sit down and read a book with their kids. If this has been your life, it's okay. God has given us a time to sit still and be quiet right? He's given us a time. To have you? When was the last time you prayed with your children? When was the last time you prayed with your audience? When was the last time you prayed for your clients? When was the last time you prayed for the clients you have and the clients that you don't have? Like when was the last time you really gave yourself time to sit still and hear from God? When was the last time you really gave your, your, yourself the time to Talk to your kids and know who they are and learn who they are, right? So this is the time that we have to change our perspective. You have to help your child change their perspective. This isn't a punishment. It's not a bad thing that you guys are at school, that we're your teachers, that you guys have to have be homeschooled. That's not a bad thing. We're actually in an amazing time. Why? Because now I'm checking on my mother just a little bit more. Now I'm calling my grandmother every day like, hey, do you need something? Hey, do you need me to bring you something? This is what this is doing. We have to change our change the perspective. This isn't a time where the 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 state of emergency is, is causing the world to crash. No, what this is doing is causing you to stop and consider other people. I'm in the grocery store yesterday and I'm thanking the Kroger clerks. I'm like, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for stocking this stuff. Like, thank you. When was the last time we told a, a grocery store clerk, thank you? Or do we just walk past them and just, because that's their job. But guess what? In this time, we need them the most. When was the last time you just said you just had a good conversation with your child or you taught your child something different? My kids always ask me to show them how to cook. I guess this is the time I need to show them how to cook, right? So we need to, as coaches, as moms, we have to change the perspective. Not only do we need to help our children change the perspective, but we need to help those that we are called to serve, right? If you're in business, this is the time for you to grow your business. This is the time for you to position yourself and increase your visibility as a coach. If you are a trauma coach, if you're a relationship coach, if you're a self-care coach, this is the time that people need you the most. Let's change the perspective. Let's give people the opportunity to sit down and heal, right? People don't heal because time moves so fast that they don't even, as long as I can keep myself going, as long as I can keep myself moving, you get bored. It's um, somebody just popped in. Oh, as long as I can keep myself going and keep myself moving, I don't have to sit down and heal. Hey, Tamisha, thank you for joining us. I don't have to sit down and heal. I don't have to sit down and face my demons. I don't have to sit down and face my, my pain and my trauma. Well, guess what? You're being forced to sit down now. So this is why coaches are so important and needed during this time. This is why. Because now there are people who are out here who are now being forced to sit down and face themselves. So we need you, coach, to stand up and be the expert. We need you, coach, to stand up and help your babies. Create a different dialogue with them. Offer a different form of communication with them. Now we're paying attention. Do you, when was the last time you even helped your kid with their homework, let alone with schoolwork? Like, I want you guys to look at what God is doing, man. God has forced us to sit down. I know that the media is telling us one thing. I know that the government is trying to provoke another. But this is a season that God is forcing us to sit down. He wants us to sit down and he wants us to love on our children a little more. The first teacher is the parent. And some of us as parents are not teaching our children what we want them to learn. We get mad at the teachers because the teachers aren't doing what we think they're supposed to do. But we're their first teachers. So now we're being forced to be their teacher. Now we're being forced to have relationships and, and open dialogue with our kids. Listen, guys, change your perspective. Change the way that you're looking at what's going on, right? This is the time to take the small things that we take for granted and be grateful, right? I'm grateful for a home that I can come to where I can click on a TV and, and stream Netflix. I'm thank you for the couple rolls of toilet paper that we have. I'm thankful for the small stuff, just being able to pull up to my house and come into my warm house. I'm thankful for those things. I'm grateful, 
right? And so I wanted to jump on and I wanted to share with you three ways to show up in this during this time as a coach and as a mom because I wanted you guys to know that just like you're at home multitasking, being a mom, being a teacher, trying to figure out how to build your business, so, I'm, so am I. I'm doing the same thing. But the difference is, is I'm changing the way I'm looking at this. I am so excited that my husband is home. I'm, I love it. I'm glad that my, I've been waiting for my husband to take some time and spend some time with us so that we can sit at the table and do this and watch movies and eat junk all day. I know I'm, I'm breaking all of my little eating habits. They're out the window, but I don't even care. <laughs> Right. So listen, I thank you guys for rocking out with me. I wanted to share with you three three ways to show up during this pandemic as a coach and as a mom. Make sure you jump in, introduce yourself. Tell me who you are. Tell me what type of coach you are. Tag another coach, tag another coach who you know could benefit from this information. Not only do we have to show up for our clients and for our audience, but we got to show up for our babies. Listen, I am I am. I am doing a massive 30 day shift for coaches. I only have room for five coaches and we're going to massively shift your market, your message and your money. Today is the last day to join the massive shift. It starts next week. You can join up and through next week, but today is the last day in order for you to get the bonus. So if you're interested in the bonus, because the, the bonus starts tomorrow, I cannot wait. We have an expert coming into my coaching community to teach us how to use our voice to stand out. I'm super excited about it. But this is the last day for that bonus. So make sure you inbox me so that you can get the link. Go ahead and register. And we're going to take the next 30 days and we are going to massively shift your message, your market, and your money in your coaching business. Remember, I am your vision coach. I help you not only find your message, but narrow your niche and grow your revenue. Cool. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for rocking out. If you're interested in my 30 day massive shift, we gonna rock out y'all. I'm, I'm putting, I'm throwing in the bathtub, the sink. I'm throwing in everything in this 30 day massive shift. Why? Because I want you to stand out in this season. I don't want you to be afraid to offer your programs and your services. I want you to win. I want your coaching business to win. And I'm going to share with you strategies on just how to do that. Cool. Love you guys. Hold on, let me say something. Cool. So when she said, um, introduce yourself, so it's like when, like when I used the word at Richmond, I say we will be quiet my, what it was, mm -hmm. the old website you made that doesn't work no more. <laughs> now I'm about to introduce it. Be real or be quiet because when you be real, you're speaking up, you ain't scared of nothing. If you be quiet, you just act like quiet, like you're usually not doing nothing. And then when you're scared to in introduce anything, you're just quiet. You're just stuff. And then when you're being real, you like you standing up. And then you're just like speaking out for some stuff. So you telling the coaches to what? Be real. Or? Be quiet. Boom.